Listen, I'm not one to argue for you rotting your brain with even more TV, but when it comes to language learning, it can be kind of fun. Hola, ¿cómo están? No sos nos, ¿qué es hoy? Hoy vamos a abordar un tema que me parece bastante obvio, ¿no? Porque todos lo hacemos, pero que nunca he hablado en mi canal. Y el tema es language learning through TV and movies. I feel like TV gets a bad rap, and in the realm of language learning, a lot of people assume that when you talk about learning through TV, you're referring to a passive activity, as if, you know, you just sit on your butt and watch a lot of TV, and then after however much time, perfect Spanish comes out or perfect Russian comes out. It's not like that. It can actually be a really, really useful and helpful activity when applied. Keyword applied. So that means not just sitting on your butt watching TV, but rather hyper focusing on the content, you know, reviewing what you learn from it afterwards, so much more. The methods I'm going to explain in this video go for all video content, of course, but also some audio content because at the end of the day, it just comes down to real natural spoken speech. But first, I want to address that this is a pillared approach. You know, it's all about addressing and balancing the different skills in language learning. And when it comes to learning with TV, I feel that the three skills you should primarily be concerned with are vocab, listening, and speaking and pronunciation. In no specific order. Not so much reading or writing, even though there are ways to apply what you learn in reading and writing, because when you're watching TV, what you want to walk away with is a better trained ear, a wider set of vocabulary that you didn't have before, and just a better natural accent and rhythm that you absorbed through all those hours of listening to dialogue. So all of the tips I'm going to mention will fall into those three categories. So. Let's get started. Before we even talk methods, however, let's talk about what you should actually be watching because you might not know where to start or you might not be watching the best content for you as a learner. It kind of just depends on what your goal is. Let's say you're more on the beginner side in a language and you just want to start watching TV in the language in general. I would recommend you start with the easy stuff. And by easy stuff, no, I'm not just talking about children's TV. Although that is a perfectly fine resource and a lot of people, even adults, choose that. I'm just referring to content that's easy for you to understand or that you're already familiar with. One good example of this is shows and movies that are centered around everyday life. You know, why do you think Friends is the all-time favorite show of English learners? It's because it's just a group of kooky friends in New York getting into fun everyday situations. You know, they're learning vocab and things that are immediately interesting and useful to them. And that's where you should be starting. You know, it's not Lord of the Rings or a crazy fantasy premise. You know, I would save that for the intermediate and advanced stages. But this could also just be media that you're familiar with in another language. So for example, if you've already seen the Harry Potter movies in English and your native language is English, that part of like the comprehension and the processing of like what's going on, it's already done. So when you watch it in another language, you don't have to really keep up with the premise. You can just focus on comparing the vantage points and acquiring vocabulary. So if you're in that situation, you're a beginner, those are two types of content that you could start with. If your goal, however, was to get in touch with how people really speak, for example, don't laugh at me, but you might like reality TV. Reality TV is so, so good for so many reasons. You know, these are not trained actors. They're not TV stars. They're just everyday people that are speaking their language. And that's a really, really good model to start with. Throwback to when I started watching The Circle Brazil and I had a crush on one of the contestants, Gable, and I mentioned that on my YouTube channel and somehow he found it. I don't know which one of you snitches sent it to him and he DM'd me about it. We had a laugh, but deep down I was embarrassed. It's funny how I always talk about like living languages and not just learning them and you guys are like, what does that mean? And it means embarrassing yourself in front of a Brazilian reality TV star. What else could it mean? But anyways, back to the main thing. Reality TV can be so beneficial because like I said, it's just everyday people speaking. Sometimes you get good exposure to different accents and regions. Like when I was watching The Circle Brazil, they had people from the Northeast, they had people from Amazonas, they had people from the interior. And that was cool because I could kind of like take my pick and like, you know, practice the different accents while I was watching. And lastly, when it comes to what content to watch, I don't want to encourage this too much because I do feel that it's, you know, the best option to actually listen to TV in the language. If you're feeling lazy or you just don't know how to get started properly or you're having a hard time, you can start with TV shows in your native language and just use foreign subtitles. I don't mean this in a bad way, but this is probably like the laziest, easiest, low maintenance way to watch TV in another language. I do this when I watch English shows regardless, just because there's no reason I should just be letting the TV rot my brain. Like I need it to stimulate me in some other way. You know, it's still exposes you to vocab as long as you're keeping up with the subtitles but yeah when it comes to watching tv you shouldn't be focused on reading subtitles right you should be focusing on listening but let's actually turn that page and talk about subtitles i'm not saying that you shouldn't use subtitles they can actually be quite the asset to you if used correctly the key is to not depend on them to you know use them as a crutch for when you absolutely need them but you know regard them as kind of a secondary thing to use for when your ears didn't catch it so one thing you could do is watch without and then watch with and by this 
this, I just mean watching the content, whether that's like an episode or just a couple of sentences with no subtitles and you try to listen and comprehend as best as you can. Then you turn on the subtitles and rewatch it with the subtitles and see if you were generally on the mark or not. This is a great kind of diagnostic activity because for example, if you can't figure out where sentences start and where they end, or if you find out you don't have enough vocab on a certain topic to keep up with the episode, whatever the case may be, that'll be really apparent from this kind of activity because you're comparing your first impression with reality. But if you want to go a bit easier on yourself and you want the support of your native language, but also the intrigue of your target language, what you can do is use double subtitles. There are a couple different apps and websites that do this, but by far the one that does it best, I think, is LingoPie. LingoPie is like the Netflix of language learning. You know, on the one hand, you have 3,000 shows and movies in nine different languages combined with a platform that is optimized for language learning through TV. One of their best features you'll notice immediately is their interactive subtitles. So you can not only see two languages at a time, but you can also just click on a word whenever you don't know it, and it'll give you the definition and save it immediately. And that is so good because you don't have to like interrupt your watch session constantly like pausing and looking things up and writing things down. And they also have vocab review tools in the app. So they have like flashcards for each show and movie that you watch. They have pop quizzes that pop up every time that you save five words. So, you know, you can either just focus on enjoying the content now and then diving into studying afterwards, or by doing the pop quizzes, you can study now and check your comprehension. And there's, I just like that. It's like, there's a lot of different ways to customize it and a lot of different ways to review. And while they have their own content that you can watch, they also have this feature called Netflix Selects. This is a Chrome extension that you can install so that you can still enjoy LingoPie's features like the transcript and the vocab and the subtitles just by watching the Netflix shows that you already are watching. So you can keep watching your shows just in a cooler, more interactive way. I really like LingoPie because aside from, you know, providing TV shows in foreign languages, they're also making it kind of like a one-stop shop for language learners, you know, where you can not only interact with new content, but also review it and really solidify it on the same platform. So if you like, you can start learning the fun way with LingoPie with the link down in the description. And with this link, you'll get a seven day free trial and also a 55% discount off your subscription. So how's that for a deal? Now let's talk acquiring new vocab. I've been kind of mentioning this all throughout the video, but there are, you know, while it's a really exciting aspect to learn new words, there are some things to keep in mind. We have to be intentional, okay? You do not need to write down every single word that you don't know. It's okay. Baby, there is no reason you should be ending a 20 minute TV episode with a list of 50 new words. What are you gonna do with that? It's okay to not know everything. I would recommend for you to only write down words that you can imagine yourself using it in conversations already, like at this point in time. Not a word that you don't know how to use or like you can't even end up in a context with and it's just like interesting but won't actually come into good use. You don't really need that word, right? But if you don't wanna do all that evaluating and like word weighing while you're watching, a good general rule of thumb is to just write down one word per minute. That's like a reasonable level of restraint, isn't it? So then at the end of a 20 minute TV episode, you have 20 new words. That's fine, that's feasible. So moving on, I think the number one way to work actively with TV and movies is to do shadowing. Shadowing, I've talked about this on my channel before, but it's essentially a method of mimicry where you listen to either, you know, a couple of words, phrases, or sentences at a time, depending on like, you know, your level and your ability to keep up. And you repeat it out loud exactly the way that you heard it. So, you know, intonation, slang, contractions, filler words, everything. You're modeling the speech as it's really spoken and like the benefits of doing this over time are so 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 plentiful because not only are you like absorbing a better accent and a better natural rhythm but there's kind of like a synchronicity between better speaking and better listening because if you can produce these sounds and these phrases you're more likely to pick up on them better and to recognize them better and then vice versa you know the listening helps you speak better and then the shadowing the pronunciation practice it helps you listen better and it's just you know listening and speaking are like this and my last thing this isn't really a tip per se it's more like a perspective persuasion point for you to watch TV in another language if you're not doing it already. Get familiar with the culture. There's so much that you can absorb even just passively about a place, about, you know, the world of the language when you're watching TV. You can get more familiar with the most famous actors in this language or in these countries. You can see different portrayals of different regions. You get to know like the key cities because like almost every TV show in the US is set in either New York City or Los Angeles or someplace in California. And you know, in Turkey, a lot of the series are set in Istanbul. So yeah, I mean, even glimpses of everyday life, like you'll be watching watching a Turkish series and you're like, why do they have that double teapot? What is going on there? So it's so good for just absorbing the country before you even ever have contact with the country. You know, if you can't travel, TV is a great way to do that from home. But that is it for me, my friends. But now I wanna hear from you. What are your favorite methods and tips to learn effectively with TV shows and movies? Let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe or else, I don't know or else, nothing's gonna happen probably, but you should subscribe nonetheless because I got up at 8 a.m. to film today. It's 10 a.m. All right, see you next time. Hasta luego. Nos vemos. Bye.